Fractions in music. We have a lot of fractions in music. The most obvious one is the one that you see at the beginning of this line, 4 over 4, which looks exactly like a fraction you'd see in math class. But in music, we don't call them fractions. We call them time signatures. And there's a lot of information in a time signature. The numerator tells you how many beats there are in a measure. The denominator tells you what kind of note gets one beat. A 4-4 four, four time signature, which is very common, tells you there are four beats in the measure. Each quarter note gets one beat. A 5-8 time signature tells you there are five beats in a measure. Each eighth note gets one beat. A 3-2 time signature tells you there are three beats in the measure. Each half note gets one beat. What do I mean by half note, eighth note, quarter note? Let's look at this diagram. In the first measure, you see what is called a whole note. You can think of that as being almost exactly the same as a whole pizza. In the second measure, you see two half notes, the same as dividing our pizza into two halves. Then we have quarter notes, which correspond to quarters of a pizza. Eighth notes, eighth of a pizza. Sixteenth notes, sixteenth of a pizza. Interestingly, as music evolved, each of those notes is in a two-to-one ratio to the ones following it, so that a whole note lasts twice as long as a half note, a half note lasts twice as long as a quarter note, etc., etc. How do we count? Well, we have a 4-4 four, four time signature. It tells us there are four beats in the measure. Each quarter note gets one count. The first measure, we see there are four quarter notes, so it's very straightforward. Each quarter note gets one beat. One, two, three, four. Second measure, one, two, three, four. We hold the half note so that it lasts for two beats. 3-4 time signature, we have a half note and a quarter note, half note, quarter note. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Fairly straightforward, isn't it? If we had a three, eight time signature, we would also count one, two, three, one, two, three. Now that might sound like I did it exactly the same as the three, four measures, but notice carefully the eighth note beats last only half as long as the quarter note beats. So if we were playing a passage in 3-8 and suddenly the time signature changed to 3-4, here's what would happen. We would count 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. The beats in 3-4 last twice as long as the beats in 3-8 because quarter notes are twice as long as eighth notes. We've seen how to count quarter notes and half notes and some eighth notes. The half notes that I've circled here each get two beats. What do we write if we want a note that lasts three beats? We haven't covered that yet, have we? There are a couple of options. We could write a half note followed by a quarter note and then just connect those with a curved line which is known as a tie. If you see notes that are tied together, you hold them out. So that in this case, you would hold it for two beats plus the following one, three beats. But there's a nifty shortcut that we can use to get the same result. We can write a half note with a dot after it. The rule says a dot after a note adds half the value of the note. So if you had a dotted half note, you would have the half note plus half of a half note which is a quarter note, which would mean three beats. Might be helpful to use the analogy of money because you know when you're making change you have to think about what each piece of money is worth. A dime is the same thing as two nickels and when you're making change that's very handy to remember. A nickel is the same as five pennies. Quarters can be thought of several different ways. A quarter can be two dimes plus a nickel, or it can be 25 pennies, or it could be combinations of pennies, nickels, dimes. And if you see a pile of money on the table, there's several different ways you could count it 
I always start with the biggest first. 25, 35, 40, 50, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60. Well, in music, we often have different note values, like this example. The time signature tells us it's 2-4, two, two beats in each measure. So I'm going to put the beats in for you to make it a little bit easier. All we have to do is figure out what each one of those dotted notes does. In the first measure, we have a dotted quarter note. So that means it's a quarter note plus half of a quarter note, which is an eighth note. So that dotted quarter note lasts a quarter plus an eighth. It's helpful to remember in that second beat that there are four sixteenth notes. The first two sixteenths are encompassed in the eighth note that's part of the dotted quarter note. In the second measure, it's the second beat where we see a dotted eighth plus a sixteenth. A dotted eighth is the same as one eighth note plus half of an eighth note, which is the same as three sixteenths. The third measure is exactly the same as the second. In the fourth measure, we have a dotted sixteenth plus a thirty-second. The dotted sixteenth is a sixteenth plus half of a sixteenth, which is a thirty-second. So the whole example, if we counted these as our quarter notes, one, two, would sound something like this. One, ba ba bi da ba 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 so you can see we have to be very good at figuring out fractions when we play music. Here are a few examples of music that I have played in the National Symphony Orchestra, and as you can see, sometimes they get very complicated, interesting time signatures, interesting ways of dividing up the beats, not straightforward. Thank you very much for watching Fractions in Music.